Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jason Nordhaus, and I'm the chief scientist at Slayo Communications. And we thought today it would be very nice to take the opportunity to talk to you about where we think local search is going in the future. And a big component of that is the word natural. What does it mean to be natural? It's almost pervasive in our culture at this moment. Um, you can talk about natural organic foods. You can talk about natural renewable ener energy sources. But natural also means things around language. It means kind of comfortable, relaxed, familiar, um, native, conversational. And conversational is a big one here, especially in terms of language. But it's also adaptive. If you're having a conversation with someone, you have to adapt. You have to communicate with them. You have to pick up on facial cues, on what they're saying, and you have to adapt to that. So natural to us is a way in which you can adapt in language and understanding. So why are we actually talking about natural language? Well, it's because of voice search. So if you look basically in, in 2015, just last year, voice search went from basically statistically zero, right? There's very, very few people doing voice search as an overall component of search, to 10% of all search volume, and that's just in a year. We expect it to actually continue going forward, especially on mobile, and in instances where uh, you need to use your hands for other things. So in your car, for instance. But we're also seeing it in places like the home. So with Amazon Echo and these sorts of things, you're interacting with more devices in more locations where you don't actually want to have your hands tied up either on a desktop, a laptop, or your smartphone. And it, this is a little bit interesting too here. So if you just look at kind of a survey of when did people start using voice search commands, 41.6% started using them within the last six months. I was actually recently in Beijing, and I can't even tell you, they use voice search there for almost everything. That's a big stark uh, contrast to here, actually, in the US. But I think it's becoming more pervasive as we go forward in time. So you can expect that voice interactions with machines will actually increase. Okay. And again, it's, it's gaining momentum. Um, and if you looked at just kind of the reasons that people are starting to use voice, again, hands vision occupied, obviously that's true. Faster results sometimes, uh, but it's really difficulty on, on certain devices, right? I don't really want to search on my phone. I don't want to sit there and type with my thumbs. I don't really want to search in a, a desktop all the time. I want to have an, a way that I can just communicate. I, I know people have been talking about um, smart watches where you can just hold it up to this and interact with it. That's voice search right there. So I think we'll see kind of going forward is more interactions with voice search in different settings, some of which we don't even know about at this point in time. But the home, car, on the go, work, these sorts of environments will probably become more prevalent and invasive, I would say, in the next few years. And again, this is changing traditional search itself. So if you're using a mobile phone or you're using a laptop or a search engine, traditional search engine, we've been trained to search in a very, very specific way to type very concisely in, and include location data. So you might do something like Dentist Brooklyn, New York. If I'm talking to a device, if I'm talking to a computer, if I'm talking to my watch, if I'm talking to something else, it's unlikely that that's how I actually want to do it. I might say something like expansive, more expansive, like my son just chipped his tooth. What do I do? And the idea is then that instead of being trained into this very fixed, finite, kind of simplistic uh, search terms, we want to make it more natural, like the way you would uh, communicate with, with another person. You might call someone and say, oh my god, you might call your parents and say, oh my gosh, my son chipped his tooth, what do I do? That's how we want to actually communicate with machines in the future. So what if search engines could actually do that and understand? So we're working at Saleo very, very hard um, to do this in the business context. So we want to connect you, given just kind of arbitrary freeform queries in a natural language, to local businesses that can help you with whatever you're looking for. So we're very pleased to announce, actually, um, our local search API today. And I'm just going to give you a preview of it, too. And I encourage you to come talk to us at our booth and to try and try out our local API. But we made a demo mobile app to kind of highlight some of it. And so this is kind of what it looks like here. You can set, basically, your location data, uh, your search radius, all the sort of standard bells and whistles you'd expect of a search engine. But then you can interact with it both through voice search, where you can just speak into the phone. It's translated to text, and it's searched. Or you can also type, if you still want to do that. So for instance here, if you query, my son chipped his tooth, 
We connect you with a set of businesses here, um, dentists, uh, that sort of thing. And what's interesting about it is too, you can swipe over on the side and you can see more business options in your area. So we're connecting you now with categories of businesses that you might be interested in. And natural, why natural language? Let's say you actually do another search for say apples. Apples can mean various things. It can mean you wanna to go to the grocery store and you wanna get some apples. It can, might mean that, oh, it's fall. I actually wanna go apple picking. Uh, apples could be anything. So if you typed in a query here, apples, we would be able to return to you things like grocery stores, uh, produce retailers, um, farm stands, that sort of thing. But if you pick, I wanna go you pick some apples, then we're gonna get rid of grocery stores. Natural language then gives you more context to say, oh, you're looking actually for somewhere where you wanna be able to pick your own apples. I wanna be able to go uh, you pick apples with a hayride for my kids. Then we can connect you into those businesses that offer those sorts of products and services. Another example here is, let's say you're walking uh, in some city you're visiting, and for whatever reason, you really are just craving a tuna roll. So you can say, where can I get a tuna roll? And then again, we provide you three categories of businesses, sushi restaurants, Chinese restaurants, and Japanese restaurants. It's very easy for you then to scroll through, find them in your local area, click to call them, or get directions uh, walking, driving, or biking to them. So to bring natural language understanding to, um, to local search, you need to be able to handle a very, very, very large number of, of queries and search terms. This is not doing some finite fixed million search terms or million keywords. Now you're doing kind of any sort of combination of English language you could possibly imagine. And so to do that, we actually we handle some arbitrarily large numbers of combinations of words. And so to do this for the US market alone in the English language, and let's say you wanted something like five words, be able to handle queries at least of word like five, but maybe even more, you need to have something like 10 to the 22 possible search query combinations. And because I have a PhD in, in astrophysics, I love doing things like this. To put that in perspective, there's 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. So our local search system can handle basically 100 billion different Milky Ways full of stars. Now, of course, not all of those are sensible, but lots and lots of them are. So we wanna be able to handle arbitrary freeform queries that anyone says. So, we are very, very happy here at Street Fight to launch our local search API. It's built to basically targeted consumer experiences in businesses you're actually able to visit. It incorporates natural language processing. We think this is gonna be very important because in the future of voice, in the future of search, local businesses start to need to think very deeply about how they are gonna be found. How are they gonna be found in, search, in searches themselves? Now, if you still, uh, you still work with business categories, names, keywords, all those sorts of things, we still handle all of that. But we handle free-form queries now. And our database is, is very comprehensive. We have 15 years of experience gathering data, learning about data, collecting it, cleansing it, normalizing it, doing all of the sorts of things to make it very, very reliable. We work extremely hard to make it reliable and trustworthy. And these 20 million local business listings are a combination of organic and sponsored. We're also making it a white label option. So this makes it very easy to use it. We're trying hard to get it uh, in developers' hands, so it's very easy to embed in different applications. So we removed a lot of the restrictions around um, that you would typically see of, of more proprietary API offerings. And it's all offered through a RESTful API. That's reliable, fast, and secure. Again, I'll just summarize at this point that we believe that voice search is gonna become a, a very big component of search in the, in the near term. And we also believe that we would, like to uh, we would like to actually create opportunities to connect consumers to, through meaningful connections to businesses they're looking for. And to do that, we're very hopeful that our natural language API will solve many of those problems for various partners and businesses. So I'd like to stop there and uh, thank you for your time. <laughs>